Welcome back to the Barebell Project, episode 54. Got together with John and Grayson. Um, man, you guys are going to get spoiled having all three of us together. That never happens. But hey, enjoy it while it lasts. So this is what's up. Uh, you have a fee. The fee is to share the show. There's a lot of good information in this episode. We talk about NFA, a little bit of longbow discussion, a little bit of um, growing longbow and barebow discussion, uh, a lot of 50 meter and arrow selection discussion, as well as some uphill downhill discussion from field. Um, this is not a super organized episode, but it's a um, there's some nuggets in this one you definitely want to hear. But anyways, share the show you know you have a fee. Your fee is that this information is free. Um, I don't bore you with sponsors in the beginning and running through, oh, thank you to this person, that person, whatever. Um, your fee is to share the show. So do that, especially if you found a way that it helped you or whatever. And, uh, you know, stuff like that. It, share the show on your Instagram, on your social media, wherever. Also, shout out to those shooting the Arizona Cup. Good luck at that first ever Barebell USAT event. Uh, wish we could be there and enjoy. I think then um, anybody I can put a name to to promote our sport. The archer who owns all the world records, John Demmer III. You know, the more difficult a thing is, the more important the mental game becomes. I, I didn't eat any supper yet either. How about you guys? Either. You guys eat yet? I didn't eat oh, you know, uh, I have some crunch berries. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Grayson Parlow. It's like me taking three or four years off your eyes just because I weakened that prescription in the shooting eye. And don't put everything into my shot that I should, that I get a lot of drop on those heavy arrows. It's dropping all the way down. He said, well, you might want to think about going to a lighter arrow in the spring walking. And that's what got that started. So you don't know what name you're going to get. I was going to do something derogatory, but I figured you were recording right away. I will. I just started recording. That's funny though. It's all good though. Too funny. What's up, dude? How are you? Not much. All right. Long, longbow wannabe. Well, you're not a you're not a group expert. That's all I gotta say. Definitely not. <laughs> In all things archery. In all things archery, yeah. Oh, man. All right, you know, I, I don't care what anybody says. You uh, you shot freaking... I know that was not your best longbow performance, but you shot pretty damn well. Are you happy with it? You happy with it? Happy? Nah. Okay. I was okay. I was okay with the first day. I thought the first day could have been a good little bit better because um, my first two ends were really trash. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's the same thing happened with the second day. Just couldn't get the, I was doing something wrong, but couldn't figure it out in time. Um, finished decent in the end, but yeah, a lot of mistakes in the uh, beginning and middle. But you also didn't have like mm -hmm. an optimal tune either. Oh, it, it was trash. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, you literally won a national championship with a trash tune and a, uh, th last minute thrown together setup in longbow. So, yeah, I should have I should have just brought my wooden arrows. Um, those uh shot better than those aluminums. I, that's 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 but, what that was tuned for last. That's what you shot. Yeah, that's what I, I shot USA with. You shot the the push live feed on. You uh, that was that was with a yeah. Uh, no, I shot the push live feed with a uh a different arrow setup than what I brought to um oops Louisville. yeah that was like the beamons or something or i don't even remember like no those those were same arrow but i had a different point configuration oh, okay uh, yeah i don't know what happened that day that day was just weird it, everything worked and i was doing everything right yeah <laughs> <laughs> but but i think the barebow form kind of kicked in a little bit towards uh towards the end with the longbow and that's where my scores kind of plummeted a little bit i should have just shot the woods um, I shot them way more consistent. You know, people are going to freak out when they hear you say the barebow form because that I, I don't I don't know if there's people realize how much change there is or what you have to change going from one to the other. 
Yeah, it's for me, it's just a little bit. I mean, it's it's scary how how sporadic a longbow can get um, in a very short amount of time. Huh. But every, everybody that shoots longbow knows that. Um, I just think, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's just the coaching they, they get. They think they have to shoot it a certain way, and it's just, I mean, it's it, it works pretty good for bare bow or Olympic or something, but as soon as you yeah. put it with a longbow, it's just bad, yeah, really bad. Much. If you if you had to pick, like, let's say you pick two very specific things that you had to ch- you have to change going from bare bow to longbow what, that make it successful, what would it be? Uh, for me, it's uh, a little bit softer fingers, a little bit less um, – Maybe, maybe I'm describing that wrong. Maybe not soft fingers, but uh, a softer, a softer follow through. Um, okay. And I gotta grab the and I gotta grab the bow a little bit because it probably wants to kick like left or right or something like that. Yeah, it, it wants to it wants to move. I mean, it doesn't have a lot of weight. Even though I got a Medusa, it's still way less than my, um, you know, my Hoyt setup, and it's just balanced a lot different because it's you know, pretty uniform the whole way through the handle. Um, so it wants to do its own thing all on its own. And I got to influence it a little bit more with the longbow. So I just lightly grab it a little bit more than, than I do my bear bow. Yeah, that may, Which that makes sense. it's kind of weird though. Cause like, like, uh, like you've told people before you have more, more tension you put in your bow hand and more oh, tension yeah. is going to be back here. Yeah. And it does the same thing with the longbow that if I grab it just a little bit, I got to be way more um, conscious on what this is doing back here than I'd yeah. like, like it to be, but it is what it is. Do, do you feel like um, your grip, cause I shot your longbow. I mean, I've shot your longbow before, um, but you know, I played around with it. I only shot like a half dozen arrows. And I was like, no, I'm done. <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> mess with this, but do you feel like, the grip on that on your because yours is very customized you have like painter's tape or something and then bondo and like you have it do you feel like that is way different than your bare bow your jd3 grip yeah a little bit not a whole whole lot but um if i got serious with the longbow with that longbow i would probably be doing way a little bit more grinding on that and get it where i can naturally grab it a little bit different okay Um, when I shot the aluminums, I have to actually, I actually have to hold it a little bit different than I did with my woods because my woods were a different spine. And okay, you know, if I did that with my uh, aluminums, they just were getting contact somewhere. So I had to, you know, turn it a little bit on my aluminums or my wood. I could have it more of a natural uh, bare bow push. Uh, mm-hmm. So I was getting some kind of clearance issue with the uh, with the aluminums. Interesting. And that's and that's all and that's all with trying to get point on and using a bare bow anchor too low, and shooting okay. a thirty six total inch arrow um, from knock to point, and shooting about one hundred and thirty feet a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were coming out fast. They looked a lot like Winker's arrows going down there to the target. <laughs> they, I, yeah, we could we could have had a speed race, and uh, I yeah I would I I would know whose would win. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, at least he has an excuse, but it's, yeah, that's funny. Yeah. They definitely were slow though, man. Cause those things <laughs> you hear it shoot like, in, and even like if I'm shoot, I shot next to you during practice and you hear thump, and then you're like a second later. <laughs> I, they're so slow. I think Rick Stonebreaker could beat him in a race. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. No, you didn't. <laughs> funny. Oh gosh. It's funny. Rick, we love you. Um, funny stuff so how about this man the first you sat is going to kick off this weekend first right with with only 10 percent fairbo but uh fairbo involved in it that's kind of cool though <laughs> yeah it's it's pretty good and and to give that numbers a kind of a a unique perspective um in the first event ever dominated um out west by uh olympic style for sure um because there's not like a real big barebow contingent in Arizona. No. Um, yeah, it, it it's only ten percent of the the sign up, but Compound only has twenty. So, you know, for the first one ever, it's actually pretty decent. Yeah, um, and there's a waiting list of like over 150 shooters. 
Yeah, and, and and it's pretty decent for the for the first one, and I would say that was still, you know, two years down the road, I'd say ten percent is still pretty decent at a at a style that's not usually um, conducive to barebow archers like uh, like target nationals. We don't have a whole lot when you consider the whole grand scheme of things, but you know, you kick that into the three D side, it's a little bit better. Right. Yeah. No. It's a that's a that's a great way to look at it for sure it's still exciting it's exciting and, and christy who is the the director of arizona cup um shout out to her she's um she is that's christy with a k right Chris, christy dw i think yeah christy Chris, christy with a k yeah yeah um not she seems pretty cool she does and she appreciates barebo um you know there was a little bit of scuttlebutt online i'm, I'm sure many of you that follow me uh witnessed some of it um and it was you know it was a it was a good discussion but you know people have their opinions and uh you know it is what it is but the fact of the matter is is it's still 10 percent more than we had and if their tournament could grow bigger um barabelle put it over that over that uh capacity and she appreciates barabelle um joining in and they're very thankful and those are her words uh she's excited for it and i know the sponsors are as well like you know i mean i typically have stopped talking about sponsors in the beginning but i am going to give a shout out here out to gaius carter because he they sponsor the arizona cup because that's where they are and um they also are very very supportive uh, including on that specific post about Barabelle and the growth of Barabelle and they thank and they're appreciative of all of the Barabelle shooters that are there. So I'm just, I am going to throw them that, throw them that uh, message. So, but anyway, Satan, I bet you were fishing. Were you fishing? You're not fishing yet, are you? I, uh, I got back at like six 30, but I went out for like an hour. Oh, you did anything good? Yeah. No? uh no i didn't have enough time but i just got a gopro so i wanted to play around with that a little bit oh uh, we're gonna get some underwater shots on tiktok from jd3 archery <laughs> we'll get some kind of shots oh no wait. <laughs> you got a gopro are you gonna go like the head mount like chest mount or you gonna... i got i got a chest and um i'll probably get a head mount and see which i like better did you get like an official gopro or like one of the the cheap ones yeah i got a a 10 Mm. there's some pretty cool stuff you can do with those for sure yeah and you can do the underwater stuff that'd be kind of cool like if you can get get some shots yeah that one's that one's supposed to be full submersible submersible so yeah oh i think well i don't know i don't don't know anything about the the new gopros but i mean they come with those cases that are they protect them so it doesn't matter like you're you're good you just put that thing down there but that's good that'll be fun I get to see some some video, some cool shots. I you you take you take really good fishing stuff, much better than archery. <laughs> <laughs> no, you do. You take really good like it's, photos and videos with fishing. It's 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 hard. Like if if I'm by myself, it's really really hard with a camera and try to take pictures with the camera. Like shooting um, or fishing, fishing. Because um, it's like you try not to put anything in the background because a lot of people don't understand you don't you don't spot burn anything right um right, right. because you, even if it's a trash stream that you think's trash it might be somebody else's sweet spot and you know you don't want to blow up some uh, you know yeah. you gotta show a little bit of respect for you know who fishes it and and where at and so, so. face it you're really saying is you don't want to burn out your spots you don't want other people coming to find your secret spot i got plenty i got plenty of spots i don't care usually i just pull up to the parking lot and if i see a couple cars i'll just go to the next one <laughs> yeah I, no that's good i mean that's that's like a like an etiquette i guess like a fly fishing etiquette of, of sorts but no that makes sense that makes a lot of sense it's 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 gonna have to get crazy here next weekend i guess the youth season was is was it, last it was saturday week? yeah it was saturday so, this past saturday yep so this no the the stock the the regular season comes up this saturday the saturday yep yeah uh yeah i don't i I can't i can't wait to go i'll be i'll be burning it up saturday yeah i'm sure you will (laughs) 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 something up probably the candle at both ends but um 
Dude, how about NFA? Listen, I, I'm I, I actually put it like when I shared this live feed. Without a doubt, the best part of the weekend was those damn scooters. <laughs> <laughs> you notice that there wasn't a whole lot of other archers running around on scooters yeah. we have a bunch of barebow archers literally driving like a mile across <laughs> Louisville <laughs> to some steakhouse down by the river it's like a i think the chicken place we went to is like it was like a mile and a half <laughs> oh, the chicken place was the far one that's right <laughs> oh my gosh funny and then like oh well, I actually took the scooter down in the morning in the rain, too. That was fun. But it really wasn't that bad. We spent more money on scooters than we did on anything else. Well, it was it was cool celebrating Grayson's birthday, too. Yeah. Well, that was that that was that was fun. But man, those scooters were absolutely hilarious. <laughs> well, that's it. we saw Grayson and I saw a couple people flying by us like when we we're waiting for everybody to come outside and we we're like hmm yeah you guys started the trend for the weekend that does look pretty fun <laughs> i think we were walking down it was after was it friday night i think yeah i think it was friday it might have been, fri been friday night yeah and and we're we're walking down third street whatever you have your backpack you have the longbow standing <laughs> up on the scooter grayson's got his big gelo black and yellow backpack on her like no way i think I actually i took a video and sent it to you i think that video ended up somewhere <laughs> and uh i see you guys going by and it's i'm like oh man that does look fun and it looks super dangerous with equipment. well that's it i grayson had his backpack on i had my backpack on with the with my quiver hanging over oh, top of right. the arrow tube on the backpack and then the longbow trying to hold the longbow straight up and down so i didn't like hit anything <laughs> It was, uh, it took some talent to like not fall. <laughs> I, oh, absolutely. I bet. I, I bet. But then like when, so that became, they started the trend without a doubt. And then the, the scooters became like an absolute, uh oh, <laughs> uh, a Kobe is entering the room. A Kobe. <laughs> I was like, Mamba. <laughs> <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll wait to continue this conversation until Grace live. Um, I think I think Grayson needs to shoot a five eighty one to be called Kobe. <laughs> ooh, John's fired. I think you're right. I think that I think that was Kobe's high game, wasn't it? Eighty one. I don't remember. Eighty one, yeah, yeah. He at least at least he called himself uh, Kobe and didn't call him Le myself LeBron. <laughs> Le goat. <laughs> no video, buddy. Or is, is are you starting it up? Working on it. There, there he is. <laughs> What's up? How you doing, man? All right. How about y'all? We're good. We're good. We're we were talking about scooters. <laughs> oh, the scooter bomb, dude! Absolutely. <laughs> Best part of the trip. No, no Well, your birthday night was fun. That was a good time. But the scooters. Yeah, that was fun you know longevity wise throughout the entire weekend you could have the shittiest <laughs> day shooting those scooters made the the, the ride home absolutely <laughs> worth it yeah we we waited till we were all done shooting before we started hopping curbs and stuff <laughs> that that night we got back to the to where we were staying and it was just scooters flying everywhere <laughs> this, Every this dude, literally everywhere this dude comes in he's jumping curbs and the just smashing the bottom of the scooter <laughs> off the curb. I'm like, yeah, I thought, go ahead. I thought I broke it the one time. <laughs> I, I smashed the back of it so five times. <laughs> it's like, boom, smash, go around in a circle. Boom, smash, go around in a circle. It just kept happening. <laughs> oh my gosh. And that place we stayed was perfect for them because it was like, it that apartment complex with like the big oval and and all that stuff oh man it was just crazy yeah nobody was taking them in the morning so they were still there in the morning <laughs> yeah we're like all right game on here we go and then we get down to the one street and you're like supposed to go you're supposed to go with traffic and we get down and i think john and grayson are ahead of us and they're like, yep, we're going on the sidewalk. We come to a red light. John's like, whoop, on their sidewalk, over the walk path. 
back out in the roadway. I'm like, this dude is going to get run over and has absolutely zero Fs to give. <laughs> We're just going. Oh, man. It was fun. It was definitely it was good times. Fun. Yeah, absolutely. So now that we got you both here, uh, Grace and John and I, we're, we're having a little bit of longbow discussion. So we got the longbow champ. Um, you know, you come out of retirement, short-term retirement uh, with COVID and all that nonsense. And do you feel like he shot better at NFAA compared to indoor nationals for USA Archery? At NFAA? Yeah. Absolutely not. <laughs> no way. <laughs> it was pretty bad, I, relatively. Um, I don't think people realize that. I know. I know you felt that way. Um, <laughs> why? What do you think? Um, I don't know. I I started off the the first day, the first end, first arrow. It almost slipped off slipped off my fingers and. I'm lucky it hit the target. It ended up being a three, almost a two, I think. Um, and I don't know. After that, I, I just kind of felt like I was playing like, I don't know, just Band-Aid to the whole round, trying to – because you can't make up any points in NFA. You just kind of have to hold your ground. So I think it was a, a mental thing, and you know, I got a little tight and – you know, just started messing up a few shots here and there. Yeah. You, uh, but you turn it on at the end, like you hit a stride there at the last five ends or something like that for, for, yeah, I think the last, I can't remember, maybe the last, uh, five, six ends, maybe, maybe four or five ends. I only dropped a point or two. Um, I changed my crawl and I just started pulling through a, a little bit harder um i said you know to hell with the tension i'm just going to pull through these shots and it, it seemed to work out yeah yeah because it was getting pretty close it um, was yeah tight race i mean um shout out to colby uh jared uh winker uh, i mean winker actually <laughs> shout out well, to winker shot well through usa and North finals as well that that yeah day. yeah he really yeah i think he would have advanced against anybody else pretty much in the first round there but um i just got kind of hot and that was that but yeah he was shooting really well yeah for sure um well congratulations anyways man i mean it's i know you minimal you shot no regular tournaments you went right to indoor nationals and you shot your local league for nfa Went to NFA, won indoor nationals. But I think the exciting thing, maybe not for John, but for me and for everybody else, is that we get to see you hopefully with outdoor target. You're going to shoot some this year. So that's that's exciting. And yeah, I'm glad you're going to get to shoot like a full season. Outdoor nationals is a good time. So um, well, yeah. excited yeah, for that. For one. Go ahead, bud. I'll be there for that one. I also want to do uh, Buckeye, and I'm hoping to do NFA field nationals um might also do nfaa target nationals in yankton i don't know we'll have to see what's going on yeah i don't you know that's one date i did not put down um do you know what that is off top of your head you don't have to look we can it's usually in like september okay yeah pretty late yeah, it depends on my school schedule. We have some like blackout days and mandatory stuff in September that we have to make. So that's what I think that's why I didn't go last year too. Um, hey, Fawn, Fawn joined in. She's in the chat. Hi, Fawn. Once again, congratulations to you as well there. Uh-huh. Miss Fawn Gerard, the, the, uh, the women's champ. She shot pretty well. She shot really well and then hit Jeff Ogilvy in the USA final uh, indoor finals and Man, they, they came down. They came down to one arrow shoot off, right? If I remember correctly. Yeah. 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 And both hit. Uh, I want to say they both hit tens or damn near close. Just Jeff's was a yeah, little I think... bit closer. Yeah, it was a close one. Yeah. I think we're we're standing there. And uh, when you guys were shooting, she was like, oh, she was the advocate for, for Jeff. She's like, why couldn't he do that when I shot against him? <laughs> um, 
Yes, Vaughn. Vaughn says she, he only got her by one. That's I, He I, should have shot that way against me, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> but we don't live in an if world, so. <laughs> no. yeah. and, and like we always say, head-to-head matches are a little bit of a shit show. Anything can happen. You just never know. Somebody hits a hot streak. But, it, it's, you yeah. know. Anybody uh, hits a hot streak, and everybody's screwed. <laughs> yeah. However, Jeff Ogilvie shot very well in the indoor final as well. Uh, he shot well too so you know shout out to him for that and everybody else but anyways so yeah nfaa good time 100 percent scooters listen people if you go to nfaa bruce cole said it it's going to be there for like another two years or whatever get yourself on scooters download the bird app and get on your scooters download the bird app (laughs) don't pull an air 100 Oh, and Eric Yost, and I'm like, Nair, oh, my, my my app doesn't work. All right. Yeah. You see Grayson going down the line. <laughs> um, it's a good time, man. It was a, a fun time to hang out. Um, the, the shooting wasn't even the biggest part of it, just hanging out and, you know, seeing everybody, going out to eat, riding around on those damn scooters. It, it was a good time. Watching clips of Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> yeah. Eric loves Jimmy Kimmel. Everybody loves loves Jimmy Kimmel. It's his besties. (laughs) Yes. Oh, Mike Nyer. Yes, we know Mike. It's 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 all it's all good fun. Um, Yeah. No, the besties. Oh man, that thing that that's never gonna that's never gonna (laughs) go away. Um, I guess you know on top of on top of that, just keep growing the number coming to that tournament because you guys are gonna have a good time regardless of shooting for sure practice range is a little hectic but it's still a good time what were we going to say grayson i was going to ask john you shooting longbow next year probably not i'll put that in retirement for a little while i think until something else comes up (laughs) world 3d maybe (laughs) i might give it a go longbow next year maybe well you're getting a kagan bow you said right yeah hopefully um Oh yeah, he's gonna stuff and let me know what he can do. But cool. yeah, yeah, I want to try. I think um, I think we can get it to at least five seven or two seventy five each day. Yeah, but probably eighty. I think on a on a on a good day we can get it to eighties for sure. Yeah, um, five seventy five should be easy. I that should have been done this year, but you know someone's not capable of that this year for whatever reason <laughs> got one day in it but the second day was trash but <laughs> eh, you should harden yourself you didn't really put a lot of time and effort into the longbow well, was the last course were down across most classes i thought yeah um, at even, least little- even in the pros it carried over still um indoor nationals for usa was down for the pros and then so was nfa yeah. scores there was only like 16 or so made the finals which usually it's upper 20s uh or somewhere at least 20s yeah. but yeah yeah that's a good point i didn't really think about that with the whole covid thing and and people returning to regular competition you guys yeah. you guys mentioned that when we talked about indoor nationals too so yeah that's a good point still down but hey we'll hopefully with transferring out to outdoor target which is in pennsylvania this year and you all should come um make sure you get signed up when it opens up um hopefully that uh we get a little bit return to normalcy and start to see those scores climb back up i'll tell you the team round will be fun grayson you're on free agency for team aren't you right now i guess so Uh oh you're gonna be getting all kinds of pms now frank could be your chick um, oh yeah yeah we can do that. hey listen i can identify whatever i want Maybe I will for the team round. Um, There's actually, better chicks out I, there, Kobe. I think you would probably be like, yeah, uh, uh, hey, Grayson, you want to be my teammate? I'm going to drop my coach. <laughs> not that I can say, you know, it's not wrong, but, you know, hey, Maggie, problem is, is that Grayson said he won't have anybody that's his teammate that doesn't use Stringler, just so you know. We have we have a we have a discussion about Stringler going on right now. It's very similar to the one that you and I had, that we had three years ago. Um, I'll have you know, but just use it, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much what you. Said. 
Um, well, Fawn's already Fawn is already soliciting for her bid for the Grayson and Fawn co-ed team for Target Nationals. You've seen it here, episode fifty-three. Fawn's already put in a bid, so you know it's probably gonna go to the highest bidder. Fawn, Fawn. we got this. Oh man! <laughs> oh, we want to create. Also- I'm surprised Rick hasn't solicited that one already. <laughs> Usually he's out there pretty quick trying to poach the top female. <laughs> yeah, he had Claire Fawn, last year. Um, so. Are you coming this year? What's that? Let me know. Is Fawn coming this year? Um, I mean, she's she's already putting it out there. I mean, I haven't seen her at Outdoor Target Nationals yet. So I'm assuming that this is her saying, yes, she's going. Maybe usually it comes down to scheduling. Yeah. yeah. Usually for her, it comes down to scheduling because it's usually like the first week or two of uh, start of school. So it's kind of rough. Yeah. That's what she just said. Depends on school. So, so ladies out there, we still have, there's still a slim chance that you better call her school and ask them to schedule something during that time. <laughs> um, yeah, you're right, though, about Rick. Rick is usually all over <laughs> looking for – if he's not looking for roommates, apparently, he's looking for teammates for the co-ed round at uh, Nationals. So, um, anyways, moving on, 50 meters. Are you guys – Grayson, you have not shot 50 meters yet. John, have you? I have not. You just. I know you started tuning for it, though. I, uh, I, I probably only shot like 30 arrows at 50. Um, it's just been cold and windy. Um, the one couple days it was really nice. It was really windy, like 20, 30 mile an hour wind. So I didn't go. And then today the wind wasn't bad, but it, you know, it was in the twenties and I'm not going to practice 50 meters in a jacket. So, yeah. Yeah. It gets old. I'm pretty lucky. I've been shooting a little bit indoors, but, um, just because I can shoot 50 meters indoors at my place now, but uh, I'm probably about to say I'm about 30 arrows in just messing with tune a little bit, trying to still shoot my old arrows. I'm hoping to be using some new arrows here by the end of April. So we'll see what happens. Um, get, get some setups there. Grayson, you got your tune started. Um, what you, I guess you can't, you can shoot 50 meters at your, at your new house, right? So yeah, yeah, I can get, you know, whatever shoot at my house. Um, I It was a little windy today, so I stayed in. Um, and I just kind of set up a bow like I would for 50 meters, heavier, um, just set the center shot and the plunger tension where I would normally put it. And I, I used what normally would be a 50 meter crawl, aimed low at 20 yards or 18 meters. And it was impact high and just looked at the tune. Um, now I, I have a new bow coming, uh, new riser, new limbs. So that's what I plan to shoot at 50 meters, but this was just to get a few arrows in because I haven't shot my bow at all since Louisville. So this is just to kind of stay in the flow of thing, keep the muscles, you know, where they need to be. Yeah. Have, have, are you changing your anchor at all for 50 meters? <laughs> no, I never do. So where is your, where's your anchor at? Is it, uh, and you, we talked about it for indoors. Are you lower, lower eye tooth somewhere? Uh, the, upper, the upper tooth, bottom of with the index finger. Okay. All right. Yeah. Upper, upper with index finger. All right. Yeah. I, with that lower poundage, we talked about this a little bit um, in, in the, in our group message. Um, I'm going to stick with those lower limbs, lower poundage limbs, but in order to get point on, I needed to drop down a little bit uh, or stay, stay with the eye tooth anchor, but lower anchor instead of the upper eye tooth, which I switched to like two weeks before NFA. Um, so that the string blur is like we talked about. So I can actively see that string blur easier, just that anchor. I had to change it in order to do it. And, and it seemed, you know, it's a little bit, tiny bit forward which brings that string further out so i can see it better but at 50 meters like you know you you see those groups go from wide like this to a lot like more of an actual oval you know staying in the gold you don't get as many left rights when you use that string blur i just needed to modify my anchor to be able to do that doesn't really 
and moving it down, I guess the only other thing is, you know, making sure that that jaw stays closed. You're not moving around or doing anything crazy, but it definitely works. There's no question. So for those of you out there, if you're not using string blur, figure it out and use it. I know I had this discussion. Fawn was standing around at NFAA and I was like, we're somebody, somebody was mentioning it. And I had mentioned, I said to them, are you using your string blur? And I was like, Fawn, you use yours. She's like every damn arrow. So, you know, you got to recognize people, you got to do it. And I, I will be one to admit being bullheaded because you can shoot so well without it only gets you to so well you will never get past that i don't think i don't know i just don't think so john you use string blur with longbow uh i don't think i did <laughs> yeah, i did I, I had to run it further out though further out to the right so it's a little bit harder to line up but you can still like I, recognize the gap. let me let me, let me let me take that back. I used it when I shot USA indoor nats with the wooden arrows, but I had to shoot. Like I said, I had to change my grip and stuff for the uh, for the aluminum set. Just felt awkward, and I like I said, I wish I brought the woods instead. But with the aluminums, I had to change my grip and stuff, so I didn't really because it was it was out, and way, I had to I had to lean my right. yeah, and I had to lean my bow over a little bit too with that. So it kind of screwed up a bunch of stuff well it, yeah that really puts it in perspective though like how much can change and then how even it you know your consistency of shooting how that can have a, a negative impact do you feel like not being able well I, maybe this is a dumb question I'm, i'll answer it myself not being able to use string blur had a negative impact on your consistency at nfa probably had a little bit yeah and my, my NFA groups were like this and it sucked. <laughs> yeah. Like I had uh, the second half of the second day, I didn't have one arrow above or below the white, but I had them three yeah. ring to three ring like this. Right. <laughs> it sucked. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, and that's string blur can have that effect. I mean, maybe not that a dramatic, little, but... yeah, it wouldn't be that dramatic, but yeah. I mean, it, it probably didn't help much, but there's a lot of, of other things that were going on that was contributing to that mess yeah <laughs> yeah but it's all it's it's all relative and people people need to know you know what it affects what it doesn't that i think oh, go ahead can, can, uh, i was gonna say can i like uh chastise the longbow shooters for a little bit yeah have at it. <laughs> the ones that complain about not having the longbow class a couple years ago the nfa decided to get rid of it because nobody was showing up um, it was the same amount of people that showed up this year that showed up in the past. Like, where are you guys at, yo? Um, you got to show up or they're going to get rid of it again. I mean, congrats to everybody that showed up. You know, there's two females and, and there was actually three, but there was a longbow shooter shooting in uh, like a, a silver senior class or something. Um, uh, you know, why wouldn't you support the longbow class if you're going to bring a longbow? Because, you know, they might just get rid of it again if they continue to see two or three people showing up and that's it i think there was seven seven adult male and two adult female that that showed up like you got to show up and represent or they're going to get rid of it and then you know all the keyboard warriors are going to complain about whine and complain just like they did last time yeah no you're not wrong you're not wrong at all it's you're not going to get the class you're not going to get classes changed you're not going to get any attention if you don't show up and if you don't um we're see we've seen it in barebow and we're seeing it in barebow except we're seeing well that was going to be the next thing was you know give a props to all the barebow shooters that showed up um this is the first non-covid like restriction year that we had i mean we had it last year and there was a decent amount that showed up last year and then this year it's kind of opened up a little bit more normal yeah. and we had a killer turnout uh this year for for uh the barebow recurve class at the uh, indoor nationals. Yeah. Well, we had a killer turnout and, and trust us when we say that NFAA is noticing let's that's, I'll just leave it at that. NFAA is noticing they are noticing barebow recurve. So continue to show up, continue to support. Um, 
support Vegas. And when you do that stuff, those, those organizations, we talk to them, but just, I mean, same with the USAT thing. We talk to these people, please know, like when you guys don't see the conversations, you don't know the legwork that goes into it, but John, myself, um, Grayson's been involved a little bit, very, you know, from a distance, but like we talk to these people, um, to help grow our sport, to grow the opportunities for Barebo. And I don't, I don't typically talk about it on the podcast. You guys have no idea how much time we've spent on this, on these types of deals for the longbow people. You got to do the same thing. It's not like you can do all the social media posting you want. That's not going to make the change. Um, and the other thing that's not going to make the change is that when somebody, you know, posts something and you go and like kind of belittle that organization online, you're, you're biting off your nose to spite your face. Don't do that. Understand us belittling the organization that we are asking for uh, cooperation with isn't going to get us anywhere. It's, it's, it's exactly the opposite of that. So, um, all right, enough of that topic, but no, John, I'm glad you did bring up that stuff, especially about longbow and NFA and, and stuff like that. Like there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes, everyone. Um, and sometimes we are our own worst enemy. So let's try not, let's try to do better with that. Um, but anyways, uh, I don't know. I mean, we, we kind of talked about, there's not much more to talk about with 50 meter, I did not schedule any tournaments yet. I don't even know well, if I've seen any tournaments yet. Go ahead, John. What were you going to say? Yeah, well, it's uh, uh, Grayson was dipping into tuning today. Um, maybe have him go over how he kind of does that. If he if he could go into a little little bit more in depth, like he right. said it, he said it where he thought it would be, um, and went from there. How would like what arrow spine did you pick and point weight? Like, what's your um, tactic on that and uh, fletching fletching wise size and spin and whatnot um all right so i got the 36 pound limbs and threw them on one of my gts wound them in a little bit and, and it's noticeably heavier than my indoor setup it's probably one of the heavier bows i've shot in a long time it's got to be 38 pounds at least um but i just i put the center shot where the string is running along the right hand side of the arrow i always use the weak biter string and this time i put it on five just to kind of see where it was i, I knew i was shooting a little heavier so just wanted to see where that would end up um i did end up having to move the center shot in a little bit because uh, i was hitting left and i moved the center shot in and i had to bump the tension up a little bit that seemed to give me the the best groups at 20. Um, but I think my arrows are still showing a little weak. Um, I could cut them a little bit. I could back the weight down, but I don't know until I shoot at 50 if I can reach 50. So I'm not gonna do that yet. Um, and like I said, this is just kind of a, a rough setup just to shoot some arrows. Uh, when I get back next week, get back home, um, my new stuff should be here and I'll set that up and actually tune that the right way. Um, but arrows for now, I'm using, uh, carbon express nano pro extremes. They're 750 spine. I think they're 29 inches, um, maybe a little bit longer and I have 110 grain points in them. Um, I don't like to go below 90 or hundred grains for 50 meters. I've shot, I've shot as low as 60 grain points in the past. Uh, when I was practicing at 60 meters before they moved us to 50, uh, just to try to reach it, but I, I don't recommend it. Um, try to stay around 100 if you can. Just seems to be a little more forgiving, a little better in the wind. Um, as far as fletching, uh, these I had 70 millimeter excess wings on. I, I'll go back and forth between those or 60 millimeter highs. Um, I, I like a bigger fletching i don't like to go with the 40s or the 50s uh just seems to be a, a little more forgiving of my weird release um corrects the arrow a little better um 
I guess, knock point. I set a little lower than I do with a fat arrow just to kind of compensate for that, the width of the arrow. I think today I set it at half an inch and it, it seemed to work fine. Um, knock height was good looking at the bear shaft. Um, I'll, I'll pull else? that picture, the picture that you sent us, I'll pull that and put it in the podcast so people can see that. Can you explain though, like when you're talking weak, why is it weak? And when you're talking um, what your focus was when shooting those, what, what you did to bring that, that pattern together? Well, how do you know it's weak? Where the bear shaft is hitting, it's hitting to the right a little. Um, but I would shoot that. I, if, if the groups were good at 50 meters, that, that tune is good enough for me. Um, I think bear shaft is good to start and I like the bear shaft to be close. Um, but once I get the bear shaft relatively close, I'll go to a group tuning method, whatever groups the best and is the most forgiving on a not great shot. I won't sacrifice groups to get a perfect bear shaft. So that's, that's a, I don't know if that makes sense or not. No, that, that makes a lot of sense, but I don't know if people understand. I, I wish you could kind of explain an example of how you would come to group tune, because I don't know if people will understand a lot of people won't, there's a few out there that will, but won't understand that concept of, well, I got a perfect bear shaft well, how, 18. Go ahead. Well, how, well, how about this? Like, like grace and group tunes because it's like we can have like three different arrow spines that tune great just right. by arrow length and point weight um like say you get a 500 yep. that groups good and a 550 and a, and a 600 you know one of those three is going to shoot better groups just the based on the arrow layout um maybe where the node is um or point weight um one of them is going to shoot better than the other two um it'll be pretty clear like like maybe Grayson will shoot like maybe six sixties in practice with the one it might be touching six eighties with another one. And it's, it'll be clear. It'd be within a round or two, you'll know for sure that they're just definitely better. And that's just based on um, perfect tune to perfect tune. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's pretty apparent when um, the groups aren't perfect or how to say this, when the, when there's one that is better than the other, Cause you'll shoot, you know, a couple ends and they'll feel like good shots, but they won't be as tight. And you're like, man, why did those go there? They felt like really good shots. And you shoot the next arrow setup, they feel the same, but they group a little better, score a little better. So it's, it stands out. No, that's good. I, I, I just don't like, I think most people buy, they, they go by what their setup is. They kind of take a guess or an approximate guess get the arrows and then do their best they can to make those arrows work i mean it's it's different when people are sending you arrows um to be able to try different ones versus you know most parents for example they don't have the money to buy three different spines now there is the option of go to lancaster archery supply buy three singles so like john you said like 600s let's say we go 600s 550s and 500s or something like that you get three of each or two of each or whatever. And you can play around by ordering singles and you don't, you don't necessarily have to get the high end shaft either. You know, like if you're a VAP shooter and you want to shoot the VAP V ones, you can go, you can get like, I think it's like a, a VAP sports V six. I, I would get, yeah, I would get like the V three. I don't think the V three is that much more than the V six, but I Price think the better quality, like three I think the quality of the three would be, way better than the six because you'll get some better shafts out of the out of the v3s where the v6s right. are kind of a lot of leftovers i mean people all the time uh, when they ask me about aerospine um most like not super premium shafts you can buy in singles so i tell them to go buy you know like three of a wide range of spines like five six seven eight hundred depending on what their setup is and you just always have them so if you're testing something new you can set them up and shoot them and see what works best instead of buying a whole dozen in what might be the incorrect spine for you. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's like, if you get three different or four different spines and three of each or three different spines and four of each, you got a bear shaft and you got three fletched ones. And yeah. that's a, do that's a dozen for life. That's going to serve its purpose for as long as you're shooting a bow, and, unless you make drastic weight changes. 
I mean, they'll, they'll last you and they'll, they'll be a good reference for the rest of your life. And, and that's a pretty cheap investment. Yeah. yeah, I tell people all the time, just buy it, buy three or four of them, and you never have to worry about this situation. Oh, which spine is going to work again? Because you have the arrows, you can just go test. Yep. Yeah, I mean, we got, for example, we got Easton's coming out with a Super Drive Micro. Um, they're not even out yet, but they have this, they have Avances. Is that how they say that? that that's a Avance. 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 Uh, I've got some. Uh, I did not fletch them up. I just didn't have the time. I'm trying to get ready to go to the this wedding, um, my wedding this weekend. Oh yeah, so I didn't have time it. to do it. Uh, I do have them. Do I? Nothing. I was busted on you. Tell everybody about that. You're getting married this weekend, dude. It's crazy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Saturday people don't know yep it's coming up fast i'm going fishing Cr crushing all those girls dreams oh yeah you you frank is devastated i am <laughs> no actually oh my i staying this weekend it, it enlightened me no i'm not i'm not not at all <laughs> sorry man we completely railroaded your conversation you, you did not get them you did not shoot them or fletch them up yet the avancees um but no prime example no they um they seem to be roughly the same size as the vaps maybe even a little the spine i have might be a little thicker than um the similar spine vaps they're they're very close but the vaps and the avance or avance are noticeably thicker than the carbon express and pro extremes um so I got a dozen of those. I might just shoot those if if I can't get I might just work out well. Because the, the Carbon Express, the, the Interpro Extremes just work well. Yeah. For me. The the VAPs work well too, but the nanos are I don't know. They just seem to be a little better, a little more forgiving. Um, especially in wind that shooting practice with them. They just they just score right? and there's nothing Nothing that the uh, the VAPs just can't hang, really, when I'm shooting good. Yeah. Are, are those arrows still available right now? The no. Pro? I didn't think they were. No. Nope. I don't know if they have them in their warehouse leftovers, if they have any leftovers or not. Yeah. They I weren't don't... the cheapest. They weren't the cheapest arrow. They were kind of like an X10 diameter, but just in carbon. Yeah. I pay big money for a dozen. I'll tell you that. If anybody's got any, I will pay. <laughs> What's fine? You better put that out there. What what's fine? Seven fifty. Seven fifty nano pros, people. Highest bidder. Get a hold of Grayson. Oh, uh, if you want to make a few hundred bucks, give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> it's like diamond in the rough with those arrows right now, man. It's 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 a thing, man. Hopefully, hopefully this the super drive micros uh have a have a good um response to shooting barebow and and they work out and uh, i guess we'll hopefully we'll find out here in april and get get to test drive some of those bad boys but um john are you gonna you gonna give the micros a try you know i know you're a nano pro uh fan as well i think nano pro and there was another one that you played around with last year too i don't remember what it was uh pro comps i think the nanos are better but i mean i really want to get my hands on a set of x10s to be honest with you. <laughs> oh, yeah? You want to try some X10s? I do. Especially, like, the spine that we're shooting. Like, I'm shooting a 700 right now. And uh, yeah. the X10 and the 700 isn't really that heavy. You know what grains per inch? Offhand, I don't. Mm -mm. Yeah, I don't, I don't I don't think. I don't think. I don't think. It's, I think it's less than a grain an inch heavier. I don't think they're that heavy. Tens um but i wonder if they'd be a little too heavy for me the way i kind of tilt my head down i i lose some some distance. but as long as i'm shooting 38 pounds i shouldn't have any problem cut them down to like 28 and a half 29 yeah you're not going to be far out in front of the riser there yeah and that's what i that's what i do with mine i still have the 600 spine yeah 600 spine from last year um, which is what I've been playing around with. 
and I'll probably, if I do go, drop, stay with those lower limbs, I'm probably going to have to make some, probably going to have to make some changes. We'll see if I can get it to work at my draw length, that might be closer to 40 before I was over 40. So we'll see, but eh, maybe get some X tens. I'll see what Lancaster has in. Um, maybe, maybe we'll see what happens with, uh, with talking to Easton, um, do kind of wrap things up and go past 50 meters. I had a bunch of people message me about some field uh, difference between uphill, downhill. It's been, I've gotten this question multiple times. So do you mind if we switch gears real quick? I just want to answer this one question because with field coming, with NFAA coming to Pennsylvania, with, I guess it's a world field. You got peep shooters going to Halifax for masters and uh, um, the, like the juniors for the world games and all that stuff. Uphill, downhill. How do you guys adjust for uphill, downhill shots in field? Do you guys want to tackle that? John, you go ahead. You're the field shooter. Oh, uh, that's going to be, like super dependent on the individual um the way i do uphill and downhill is going to be different than probably different or maybe a little bit different than grayson a little bit different than you frank um it's something that you personally got to get out and practice it and record notes and remember you know how you did that because uh every individual is going to be different um the way the way i draw the way maybe the mobility or immobile of your body right. um is gonna definitely play huge factors on on how much you got to cut or if you cut at all um uphill unless it gets to towards the extreme levels i just shoot it for what it is um some people maybe with better mobility or whatnot or just the way they shoot um they have to cut a little bit of yardage because theoretically you should cut but i don't have to cut anything until i get up to like maybe a 20 percent angle and, and steeper um but like anything in between 20 and zero percent angle i don't have to cut at all um but downhill i gotta cut a decent amount and it's just the way i draw um and the way i hold but yeah, that's so everybody's got to do that on their own downhill and let's i i understand you're saying other everybody basically needs to do it they need to practice it they need to try it figure it out yep. what is happening in your shot cycle and what your tendency is at making those shots. But for you, let's just, let's just put it out there. Your experience is you, you do have to cut downhill uphill. You're good. You're good until 20%. So where, when you're cutting, like how, do you gauge it by distance, by angle? Is it by just feel and experience? Like, do you adjust at your anchor? Do you adjust at your crawl? Do you, what, what are you changing? Are you just gapping the difference? Are you like, well, I think I'm usually hit here. So I'm going to aim here. What do you do? Uh, for field, um, it's for me, it's mostly just straight cuts and that gets me really, really close. So I don't have to get too uh, in depth on, you know, how much I need to cut at what distance or whatnot. So like, uh, if I hold my bow out there and that target's hanging down by my grip or something, um, then I know I need to cut like two meters and I'll just cut it two meters. I don't care if it's uh, 20 meters away, if it's six meters away, if it's Got um, it. whatever, 50 meters away, I'm just going to cut two. And then based up for field, if I based on where my first arrow hits, if, if it was a really good scout and everything shot good and then and I shot a low four, Okay, then you know what I I know I just got to add a yard, um, but if I'm in in that area where I don't know what I need to do, like I, I'm not sure if I need to add two or three, um, I'll just gap it. Like, say I hit uh, a four low, my next arrow I'm gonna aim at the top of the gold, and it should just drop right in there. Um, but that's usually more on the extreme stuff. Like if I'm two or three ring, right, two or three ring high. Um, then like say I'm two ring high, then I know I'm, you know, I gotta, I gotta come down to the three ring, four ring, five ring, and, and then the bottom of the five ring, because that's the way I aim. So I got to go down four rings. So I'll bring my aiming point from bottom of the gold. Now I'll be at the bottom of the one. 
um, because I, I, I'm lost. I don't know where to, uh, where to crawl if I need to cut two, three, four yards. So I'll just gap off of that first one. Got you. Okay. No, that's, that's good. I think that should, the answer to the, the questions that I got, um, got some. Do it, figure it out on your own. <laughs> Basically go figure it out on your own. Do the damn cool. thing. And you got figure it out bring, your bring, own. you know, take a range finder, right? Take a range finder, range the target. It's going to show you if you get a decent range finder, it's going to, it's going to tell you the slope, right? So just write down the slope. Okay. Find, find something 10 degrees scope, you know, range it, find something at 10 degrees, figure out how far it is. And yeah, don't do the, don't do the, um, do the line of sight. Don't do, you know, the actual, like, you know, I don't know, cause some of them have it calipered to what the actual shooting, you know, the range you should be shooting it for, for, cause they're fact factoring in cuts. But if you do the, like the line of sight and just figure it out like 10 degrees. Okay. Right down 10 degrees. Okay. It's at 30 meters. Let me shoot my 30 meter cross, see where it hits. Right. Uh, and then go from there. Like if it hits, if it's dead square, right, right on it. Okay. Shoot three more or two more. And if you're always dead on at 10 degrees uphill, okay. You know, you don't need to cut. Um, but if you're hitting three ring high at 30 meters, when you're crawling 30 meters and the target's 30, then you know, you need to cut and then you can figure it out right down in your notebook, 10 degrees. I need to cut X amount of X amount of yards off my crawler, you know, and then keep that in your notebook and then just study your notebook. Right. Well, that's good. We should do a, a, a field shooting seminar at York archers with Eric. They have such a nice course. It'd be kind of cool to be able to do like a, a weekend shooting field. I guess they're they're doing some of that at this the single string camp, archery camp. Yeah. If if they only ever had anybody to do one at York before, that would be Did you do one before? I didn't know that. That's that's yeah. good. You should do it again. <laughs> uh, I, that was like that was like I forget how many years ago that was. It was probably three or four years Might ago. Might have been before your time, Frank. I think it was. Yeah. I don't I I I do vaguely remember a thing going on there like right when i first got in but that was i was nah that wasn't i'm nowhere near uh, last year Dude, even even winker came up all the way from was it north carolina it came yeah, up all the way up from north carolina, carolina went to it yeah yeah four years ago so it's probably right before i started it was probably right before i started because i've only been in this game in barebow officially for four years so, but that, that would be a good idea to do another one and like make it field specific, not, you know, not this, cause you, and not that the single, the single string camp is going to be a good thing for a lot of people, but like, you can only, you can't dive into one thing in totality when you have so much other stuff going on. It's kind of one of the things I've always found with those types of events. Like you get a little bit of good stuff for a whole bunch of but a bunch of different items instead of like concentrating on that one thing and feel there's shooting with you this summer. You realize there's a lot more going on in field than meets the eye. And when you're judging distance, the uphill, the downhill, the peeps shooting longer, aiming off the shelf, if you have to at a longer target, all that stuff. And it, it definitely is a game that takes a lot more practice, like to learn and to know what your tendencies are. Like you said, learning to cut, what's the difference going to be for you versus me and versus grace and where are we going to hit different at the exact same distance and stuff like that so might be something to consider maybe we'll talk to eric about it we'll invite jimmy kimmel i mean yeah and uh we we'll have an event talk about some field stuff over at york archers but all right guys all right thanks for answering that by the way john grace is there anything you want to add there i know you said you don't shoot a lot of field or whatever but um, so I haven't shot, I've never shot at a feet of field target. Uh, I've shot a lot of NFAA field and you kind of have to basically do what he said. You have to just go shoot the different distances at the different angles and see what works for you. And, you know, each setup might be a little different. If you're shooting a slower setup, it might be a, a little different. Um, but with the setup you're shooting, just remember, okay, this angle, this distance, I have to do this. It, it takes a little time to memorize, and there's no, you know, cookie cutter way to apply it to everyone. You just have to practice it. There's no easy answer for it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks for that. So, well, NFA field, that's your field hunter, right? That's a field hunter half. Hunter is the off distances, and then 
near the field is the even the 40 45 50 55 whatever um all right thanks for that grayson appreciate you your club has uh give a shout out to your club because i know you mentioned them online and they shared what's your club's name two rivers archery in two front rivers. royal virginia in front royal yeah that's yeah right. they have a it's a good club. they have a nice indoor building shoot almost 40 yards in there um and then they have a full field hunter um 28 targets they set up 3d stuff and yeah it's a nice club nice to be able to go to it's probably 15 20 minutes from my new house oh nice good stuff yeah i i, I uh do they host actual field shoots yeah nfa field stuff yeah Okay, I'll have to check out that schedule and make it ride down because there's not a lot of PA clubs hosting field shoots. That's for sure. Not many. Yeah, I think they probably hold maybe four, five, six a summer. Pretty much one a month from April, May, June, July, August. Yeah, so probably five. Outstanding. We might have to come down and try to make one or two of those for sure. Not a lot of options up here. Yeah, yeah good time. Will do. Absolutely. They don't have um, a little bit of up and down, uh, but not a, not anything extreme. So it, it's kind of difficult to practice that. But, um, but I've got a like a 48 by 48 foam target here that we could put out um, in my yard and we can get pretty extreme on the angles here if you wanted to practice it. Oh, nice. I didn't know that. Um, well, this is this year's in Mechanicsburg. I've yeah. never shot there. John, you've shot there. Does that have a lot of up and down? Ooh, it's, it's extreme. For real? Easy. Oh, okay. All right. Now you're gone. Now you're gone, though. It's, 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 it's probably a little harder than Yankton. But it is not much. Okay. Yeah, it's not much. Like, Yankton's kind of weird. They did add a bunch of platforms, but I don't think platforms are really that hard to shoot off of. Um, the thing with uh, Mechanicsburg that will be different than uh, Yankton is there'll be slopes. So you got to shoot off of slopes, side slopes. Yeah. Where, you know, you have a, what makes it tricky sometimes is you, you got your target butt like they're perfectly straight. But so like Mechanicsburg, they'll be t tipped a little bit. So you just got to be a little bit leery of that, of bleeding points left and right because of a little bit of slope. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's hard to uh, duplicate for training purposes unless you actually do it. I mean, you can make it happen, but that's good. I know that's that's where, like, York's course is definitely a little bit of everything. I always like their course. I have Yeah, we shot, we shot that one a couple times at, at York uh, once for the seminar, and then uh, they had states or something there, and uh, they had some pretty cool-looking targets, uh, target layouts. Yeah, a lot of a lot of easy shots like most field courses, um, but they had some pretty cool, you know, two, three, four per half that were pretty cool. Yeah, that's definitely a good uh, that's a that's a good representation of what field is. So if you guys are in Pennsylvania, uh, west or east, you can you can get to York. It's kind of right centrally located. Get over there. It's Eric Yost Club. It's a great club. It's an old club. It's been around a long time. Um, try to get hopefully if they get some schedules, we'll try to post them. If you guys can come practice on those. But all right, let me see. I don't, we don't have any questions. We do have some funny comments, but nothing crazy. Uh, it looks like Brett said that this past weekend was, was your moment to shine. Grayson, I don't know what that means, but it sounds fun. Um, Robbie Weiss, what, this, what's that? The wedding or this coming weekend or? Um, I guess he means this coming weekend is what, is what he means. Yeah. I, I, I was kind of hoping he'd come I don't know. last weekend in New York, but it's all good i might not want to know uh, um robbie said we should come to iowa and do a field seminar robbie is there any other barebow shooters in iowa besides you no, i'm just playing is there anybody in iowa <laughs> is there anybody in iowa are you even in iowa um charlie cosgrove says every wednesday uh in april they are doing a field shoot meetup at ving i don't even I don't even know how to say that. Something Bowman. I don't know. Shot there with him uh, one time when I shot the the indoor record. Nice place. 
it's kind of far for me, but yeah, nice place. Okay. Yeah, he's a good dude. He's a real good. Yeah, dude. Charlie. Is that um FIDA or is that NFAA Charlie? Um, I don't know if you heard that, Charlie. Just shoot a comment in the into uh, into the chat, then. I'm, he said field, so I'm I'm assuming NFA because I don't know a lot of people that do uh, a world archery field course around that actually post it. I don't know. Besides up at your place, John. Well, that's lone. Is that Lonesome Roads field course that we shot on? Yeah, that's they they have uh, usually regionals up there yeah. for NFA for all the PSAA, which is an NFAA field. Yeah. Um, all right, Charlie said it's a FIDA. Cool. Cool. All right, perfect. We'll have to try to get down there and see that as well. Uh, are you doing USA field trials in May? Are any of you doing USA field trials in May? I will not be doing USA field trials. Grayson, or John is not doing USA field trials. Grayson, are you doing USA field trials? No, with the wedding, I just want to have time. Yeah, so it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting who makes the team. I'm, ass- yeah. I'm, assu- I'm assuming I'm assuming it's gonna be Rick and then fill out with the other two. I'm curious. Yeah, I'm sure Rick's going. I think Robbie's going. Robbie's Robbie's got a good shot. I don't know if Winker's Is going. Matt going? I I think Yak is going. I think Yak is going. He's got a good shot. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be cool to get them on there. Be a good experience. I'm going to try it one year, just not this year. Too busy, not enough time to practice. We get it. And and then kids will come along. You don't have any time at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, there should right. be another one. There should be another one coming pretty quick. I don't know which one they're going to move into the next year, but. I don't, I don't know what the normal normal schedule would be field would be next year. So who knows? Yep. All right. I think we're going to, we're going to shut her down people. Um, we had enough rambling going on. We talked about a, a bunch of stuff, Jeff, you're just going to have to let John answer that on the comments. He's, he's not going, you're not going to talk him into going. He's not going Jeff. Oh, we'll Who's, Oh, Jeff, no. Jeff can go. Jeff's got a good chance. He would have a very good chance. Yeah, the well, way he's been shooting going, indoors. He's, huh? He wants to know why you're not going. He's I got wanna. fishing to do. <laughs> <laughs> I got to give so you know, you got to give other people shots, man. Je- Jeff, uh, he doesn't have that many more trips around the planet, so he's got he to gotta take his shot right now. <laughs> oh, jeez. <Jeez. laughs> man, talk about a shot below the belt, right? <laughs> Oh gosh, hey! No, Jeff's a good dude. He he's got yeah. a really good chance. Um, uh, whether I go or not, he's got a good chance. He's, you know, he's he's a guy. He's a guy that can catch fire and just steamroll a bunch of targets together and put up a a good solid score. Absolutely, we've seen it time and time again. So, he also said that you suck. But anyways, <laughs> all right, we're gonna call. Now, I might be, I might still be a little sore about him kicking my butt. <laughs> he kind of did whoop up on you. There's no question. <laughs> it's all good. You you literally faced. Well, I mean, besides Grayson, the, one of the toughest opponents right off the bat. So that's what happened. Yeah, he he what shot happened? below his he shot below his pay grade for the indoor nationals. <laughs> He should have been up there in like fourth or fifth slot, <laughs> not seventh. Wow. Yeah, I think Jeff could put up a 1080 at least. He's a shooter. Yeah. He's uh, he's he's one of our favorite characters. Just be careful how many pictures you get stuck in with Rick. Uh, <laughs> you, don't want us to, you don't want us to caption those pictures, by the way. Just saying. <laughs> All right, we'll call him this a night. Guys, thanks for logging in. Uh, John, congrats once again on the longbow. Um, and Grayson, congrats on NFA champion as well. Enjoy your your cereal bowls. Um, Frank, congrats on being get, our friend. Yep, I appreciate it. <laughs> thanks thanks so much for stinking up freaking the entire apartment 
at Indoor Nationals. Uh, yeah. Son of a. Anyways, I'm out. Peace.